Christy. Hey, Edith. I already burned 2,000 calories today. How? I left some brownies in the oven while I napped. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm Edith. We're backyard gardeners from Colorado. And neighbors. And friends. These days, gardening has gotten very popular. And we've noticed more and more people picking our brains for tips and troubleshooting about gardening. We're not experts. We just learned a lot about gardening from the mistakes we made along the way. So welcome to Upside Down Tulips, a fun podcast that celebrates gardening gone wrong. Upside Down. Everybody. Hi, Christy. Hi, Edith. Look how happy I am to be back. It's been a long time since we've been here in my basement yes. to record an episode. It has indeed. This is great. We had our Halloween special. Uh-huh. We did our all-commercial special. Yes, we did. And now we get to talk about our gardens a little bit again. Well, thank goodness. And you know what? The last time, let's see, the one previous to the Halloween special, remember how we garden? Uh-huh. You know, I, I really liked that episode, not that we, I'm patting us on the back, but I did. It was really good. You know, I kept, I researched some more. Christy, I found out some really interesting things. You want to hear? Yeah, yeah. What about people that want to garden all year round, all, all through the winter, for example, uh-huh. in their house, and they don't have a lot of time, maybe? They have these sets called Click and Grow. They send you the apparatus, they send you the seeds. And you click it, and it does everything. It even waters itself. Wow. Does it have a, a light that goes in it, too, then? Yes. It does everything. It does everything. How big is it? It depends. They're not huge. Like, you can't, like, fill the whole bedroom or anything. Uh-huh. Like, you know, it, it's counter size. Let me put it that That's way. That's nice. sizes. Then, Christy, I found something even better. Have you heard of keyhole gardening? I don't think so. Okay. So, what do you think of when you think of keyhole? Um, like a like a little hole underneath the doorknob. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay, so listen. You know how I sometimes get too excited to talk coherently? <laughs> I have written stuff down. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Oh, you, Edith, you, I'm you, gonna you be typed re- it up. I have. I have. Okay. Listen to this. Keyhole Gardens. They were first um, created in the 1990s in Lesotho, which is in South Africa. They have a lot of drought there, and they don't have. They have a lot of erosion. Mm-hmm. So what they did was, and here it is, quote, the traditional keyhole garden is a raised circular garden bed with a wedge-shaped cutout along yes. one side that allows easy access to the center of the garden, where a cage serves as a compost pile. Is it is it like a little like a little horseshoe? It's like a little keyhole, like yeah, a big keyhole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, like a horseshoe. It is with the like a pie with with a wedge cut out. If you're thinking in terms of uh-huh. food, which I often do. Uh, so the compost, so the compost pile in the middle. Uh, you put the kitchen scraps and everything in there, uh-huh. and you water it, and the garden sucks the nutrition and the water out. How smart! It's it's six. It, uh, feet diameter is as large as it should be. You don't need a lot of space, do you? You don't need a lot of space, and you can have more than one, but that way you can get inside there, and you can reach all of it. And you're standing. And you're standing. You're not getting up and down you're, on your knees. That is exactly right. You're standing. You know, a lot of people have trouble gardening because it's hard to get down on your knees. It is hard. It's getting hard for me to get down on my knees. Absolutely. So, um, you can you can do it yourself. You can make one yourself, you know, using stones, bricks, concrete, uh-huh. anything that could support the soil. They are, It's like two to three feet high, the wall. The compost pile is a little bigger than that in the middle, in the cage. Uh, they also have sets that you can buy. You can buy them already made up. They're pretty expensive. Mm, it sounds like mm-hmm. they'd be kind of easy to build. Yeah, if you have you rocks know? and stones or... Who doesn't or, have or, rocks or, and or, stones? Is it true? I mean, like even like uh, cinder blocks, right? Yes, exactly. Cinder blocks and bricks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So um, I I was so taken with that. You know, the first thing I thought of was Alice in Alice in Wonderland looking uh-huh. through the keyhole. Doesn't she look through the keyhole yeah. when she gets... Um, and I thought, well, what is this? And... What a cool way to garden. If anybody's out there who does that, will you write in and tell us about it? I've never heard of it. I would love to know if someone's actually doing it. Isn't it wonderful? 
saving the soil, nourishing the soil, uh-huh. cutting down on water, and and because there's the compost pile is right there, you can plant so much more than you normally would because there's so much nutrition, nutrients in the soil. Wonderful. Just great. I had some thoughts from the last time we were down here. Yeah. Talking about uh, the garden. And we in the last episode, we... Memories I, <laughs> like the corners <laughs> of my mind. I knew you, if I'd start, she would... Oh, she, she's not going to stop. <laughs> I was going to say, do you remember when we talked about Robin's... Yes, and we animal were, groupings, and uh-huh. animal groupings, and I was saying, you remember, like, what do you call a group of robins? Is it a, a hood of robins uh-huh. or a round of robins? Right, a breast of robins, or your favorite, um, a Batman of robins. Ah, Batman of robins, right? Well, folks right. have written in and given us some more. You want to hear some? I do, I do. So, um, how about a bobbin of robins? Oh, I love that. Okay, like so that's that my that's my new favorite. I a that bobbin was great. of robins. Um, a carol of robins. Oh, that's pretty. A rouge of robins. Uh huh. A reliant of robins. A worm of robins. <laughs> one worm for all the robins. Yeah. And I like this one. A Williams of robins. Robin oh, Williams. Robin Williams. Isn't that great? And we also found out, we were trying to remember what you call a group of owls, and we were yes. just kind of guessing. Yes. On it, and it's a parliament of owls. Oh, because they're so dignified looking. Yeah. Right? Not neat? Oh, that's really neat. I love that. Well, um, a lot's been happening in our gardens, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's that time. Winding down takes a lot of work, doesn't so it? So what's going on in your garden these days, Okay, Edith? so these days, this last week I harvested... Carrots and beets. Mm-hmm. Carrots and beets, and uh, they were wonderful because I have been mulching, so and it's not been that cold recently. Uh-huh. I took, um, I dug out all the soil under my compost. You know, once once the kitchen scraps in the barrel get old, I dump them down mm-hmm. below into the ground below. I had um, three wheelbarrows full. Nice. So I took that, and I took the compost, and I took the horse poop, manure, poop, whatever, <laughs> and I mixed it together. Can I, we say poop? I think we can. I think we can say poop. Okay. Uh, so then I would dig either trenches or holes, depending on where I was, and put in the, the, the fertilizer, the natural fertilizer, which is the horse manure, and the um, compost. Put it in. Put the soil back and then I mulched it. Mulch it. The whole I got the whole entire yard done. Congrats. So that's happy. a lot that's a lot of heavy work. That's a lot of heavy work. That took days. Days. Luckily my daughter came over yesterday and she helped me and that cut the time in half. But yeah, I've been working on it all week. It's good for your for what your about arm you? muscles. Yeah. What about you? Well, as you saw when you came over to my house for Halloween that I who normally turn my compost pile once a year mm-hmm. in the spring, and mm-hmm. it's usually not me, it's usually my handsome and handy husband, mm-hmm. I turned the compost pile. Oh, good for you. It looks so pretty. Good for you. That's such a good feeling. Did you see worms in it or anything? No, but I got a lot of compost in it, so I, I should do something with it before it all yeah, you should. goes down. You know, you could throw it right on top That's if true. you wanted. You, I, you don't I even usually have to do dig. that. That's what I usually do in, in the, just throw it in the vegetable garden. That's, a pure no, it, that's the pure no-till way. And just, just let just it soak it, in mm-hmm, over the snow it. and let it work its way in. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, we had snow, so that just made everything go away. I cleaned out most yeah. of the entire vegetable garden. Yeah, I took out everything too except the root vegetables. Yes, yeah. I have some. I, but it's interesting to me though that my lettuce is still going fine. My spinach is going fine, mm-hmm. and I have little baby dill that reseeded that's still out there growing. God well, it's bless been it. almost eighty every day this week, so everything so that's is kind of nice. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, I um, I have a present for you. You do? Yes. I roasted pumpkin seeds. Oh, it's an edible present. It's the best. There's two kinds oh here. Oh my gosh, thank you. One is cinnamon sugar and one is ranch. Christy, that, that is so great. I love pumpkin seeds. And also, you probably want to know why my thumb looks so weird. Your thumb looks like a cartoon thumb. 
It does look like a cartoon thumb. <laughs> it's really big. Well, today I was in urgent care because I had a gardening mishap. Uh-oh. So last Saturday, I was collecting seeds uh -huh. from my cosmos, from uh, zinnias and other assorted f plants around. And I had was not wearing gloves. Because I was collecting seeds. Yeah. And you want to... Yeah, you, can, you have you to be, use your yeah, fingers, you have to right? have dexterity. So I was collecting Cosmo seeds. And I'm thinking like, well, I've just collected. This plant is done. So I just started yanking some out. Yeah. And I got a splinter in my thumb that I just knew as soon as it went in Ooh. that it was big and it was deep. And I tried for four days to get that splinter out, soaking in Epsom salts and baking soda, it was Christy, um, was it was it a plant based yeah, splinter? It was part of the cosmos plant. The stem Which they of the get cosmos. so woody and sharp, don't they? Yes. Wow. And when the nurse practitioner pulled it out today, yeah. Um, it was over a half an inch long. Wow. Embedded in my thumb. You couldn't even see it. Did it cost ten thousand dollars? It was a hundred dollar <laughs> copay and fifteen dollars for the antibiotics. Okay, that's not terrible, but Thank goodness you have insurance, right? Yes. very. Yeah. I feel very blessed and privileged that I have that. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm glad everything is okay. And and it's a... My thumb is very numb. It's a humorous a numb thumb. I have a numb you have thumb. a numb thumb. A humorous numb thumb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think the last thing I need to tell you, Edith, yes. is that I have a confession to make. Okay. Do I look like a priest to you? I'm not even a nun. <laughs> Okay, remember how we start. I know. I'm Father just going to say has it. been I, how many? Okay, go okay, ahead. I'm just going to say this, is that um, I had the last of the tomatoes. I brought them in, yeah. and they're green, and I wrapped them in newspaper, and I put them in a box, and they're up in my attic. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Do you have a little reminder somewhere that you should go up and look at them? I, that, that's your job. <laughs> okay, because I've already had two go rotten. Oh, okay. I, you know, I put them in uh, someplace I don't so see So it's not just day. me. No, it's not just you, but except you do boxes and boxes, yeah. and I've had two. So, folks, so. last year I put tomatoes up in the attic, and I forgot about them, and they ended up being up there for 10 months. Yeah, and then we had a great unveiling down here. It so was fun. everybody help me remember, I have tomatoes in the attic. Yeah, yeah. Don't let them go to waste, Christy. <laughs> well, folks, if you ever hear words or terms you're not familiar with, or you want a good laugh, Check out the Upside Down Dictionary on our website, www.upsidedowntulips.com. Right. And if you want to see pictures of our gardens, visit us on Facebook. www. No, that's not. The, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Just the Book of Face, Instagram, and Pinterest. The Book of Face. <laughs> Upside Down Tulips is brought to you by the Society of Gardeners Patients. In today's world, it's not easy to be patient. We don't like to wait. We want results right away. These days, there are plenty of good reasons to be impatient. Who's going to be the next president? The vaccine isn't materializing fast enough. Rejection, disappointment, how to deal with it all? Here at the Society of Gardeners Patients, we know a lot about patience. If you're feeling frustrated these days, may we suggest gardening. Gardening is a grand teacher and cultivating patience is its ultimate lesson. We have no choice but to wait for plants to grow in their own sweet time, no matter what we do. Plant a bulb in the fall and spend the winter dreaming of the flowers. Put in an asparagus patch, and three years later, put hollandaise on it. Plant a tree, knowing you may never live to see it large enough to sit under its shade. Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. All you have to do is dig up the soil, nestle each plant into its new home, tend to it, feel gratitude, and be patient. This message has been brought to you by the Society of Gardeners Patients. Was that too long? No, we're patient. We're back. Hello. Hi. So this week's topic is a topic that a lot of people have told us they wish we would discuss. 
Uh huh. Good. Which is garden tools and also some handy hacks for tools. Wait a minute. Can I clarify something though, Christy? Uh -huh. By tools, we don't mean people we know that act appallingly. We right. mean tools, you know, the <laughs> thing that separates us from the rest of the animal kingdom. You are 100% correct. Things that Edith. help us. All right. I just wanted I'm glad to clarify. You clarified. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, what are some of your favorite tools you have? I have three. There's three tools I could not do without. And they're like your absolute basic, basic. Um, I have a very, one of those small, like 18 inch hand weeders. You know, uh -huh. the bottom looks like a, a forked tongue yes. of a snake. Mm -hmm. Works beautifully. It works to, you can dig a hole to put a seed in, or you can take out a weed. I need one of those. I don't have one of those. Can you believe that? Christy, how, I know exactly I what you're talking about. I don't know about. how you can not have it one. It looks They're, like a little, the tongue of a snake at the end. The tongue of a snake, and it is light, and it's cheap. It costs, what, seven, eight bucks? That's nice. You know who has really nice ones right now? It's Ace Hardware, actually. They have the best tools across the board. I don't know how, but they do. I was yeah. in there the other day. So there's, that's tool Well, now you know what to get me for Christmas. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I will. Hint, hint. Oh, that wasn't a hint. That was a lot more than a hint. <laughs> Come on. But you know what? These deli You earn it. You earned it because you gave me these delicious sun. What are they? Uh, pumpkin seeds. Yes. They oh, Christy, they're so good. Okay, so number. So that was the the weed thing. That mm -hmm. I don't know the real name of it. A shovel. How else are you going to move compost without a shovel? Yeah. And uh, a small pitchfork. Mm -hmm. Like a garden fork. A garden fork. Yes. But, but one, you know, not a hand one. One that you can put your foot on. Yes. That's different than a pitchfork. Pitchfork is for straw and hay. And yeah, and it'll have, it'll have thinner yeah. pine. Yeah. Uh, a pitchfork looks lethal. And it's yes. used in horror movies. Yeah, you, you jump out of the of the top of the, the loft in the barn into yes. the haystack. Yes. And you get stuck by a pitchfork. Yes. But a garden fork is, mm -hmm. yeah, you could put your foot on it. Yeah, so it, it's like it's like a baby pitchfork, a baby non-lethal, gentle, new agey yes. fork. You know, I say a garden fork is on my list too. I, I they're I, exp I'm not getting you one of those. I'm just well, not. they are expensive. Oh, I thought you were asking for me to buy it for no. you. <laughs> no, not my Christmas list. My list of favorite garden tools. Favorite garden tools. Yeah, yeah. it is a garden fork, and I and. Uh, since I've been really seriously gardening for 20 years, I really, I go through them. I'm not very good at keep, they, mine get bent up a lot. I'm I just, maybe just shows how hard my soil is or how tough I am on them. Hmm. But I've got three right now in, in the garage in different states of, of excellence. Bent, of, of bent? bent? Yeah. Oh. I'm tough on them, but I do love them. Yeah, I love them too. I love them a lot. What else, what else do you like? Well, my other favorite tool is the hoary knife. Oh, you told me about, tell everybody about that. I bought one for my daughter because you recommended them so highly. Does she like she it? She loves it. Yeah. So I have my hoary knife here and it's it's somewhat hard to explain, but it, it looks a little bit, I mean, it's a knife with a wooden handle and a very pointy end. It's a Japanese tool and one side is very serrated and it is a multi-purpose tool. You can dig with it mm -hmm. you can cut with it i see it has measurements on it has measurements on it so, so you, can you can plant bulbs with it or seeds or seeds you know if i can want to plant rows or things like that how deep you need to go uh-huh uh i i it and i have broken one of these before too however it's my own fault because i just thought it was indestructible but it is a very strong and sturdy tool and i think i got this for like 13 bucks on amazon a hoary knife h-o-r-i you um Gretchen said she can use it as a scissors. Yeah. How? Well, I'm I mean, you can cut how. things. You can cut things with it because oh, of the oh, serrated I see. part. I see. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's most, I uh, love it in during spring cleanup when you've got to cut back uh -huh. the perennials uh -huh. to, to the ground. I love, I love digging it with it. So if I'm ever going to be planting things, it just, it's just you so know, great Gretchen's to You know, Gretchen's came in one that had a holster. Does yeah, it's awesome. A it does. See a how leather holster? Cowgirls. Cowgirls. It's just, All it's right. just, a, it's a great tool. And then I would say my other favorite tool, which ironically I wrote this down before I got a big splinter in my hand, is my favorite tool is my hand. I'd like to do a lot of things with my hands. I uh -huh. like to, um, I should wear gloves a lot. So maybe mm -hmm. I should say my other favorite garden tool is a pair of gloves that I should wear gloves. But I do like to 
I like to do a lot of things with my, it's the same thing with cooking too. I always feel like the best tool you can have in the kitchen are yeah. your hands. Well, you can't plant seeds with gloves on and, and Correct. you can't collect seeds either because mm-hmm. you, you just can't. You, I like you getting my hands dirty. Yeah. I like, um, which is interesting because even I look at my hands right now with the exception of my enormous thumb that I can see like, oh, my cuticles look nicer. My nails look better. My hand, because this, I haven't been out. Oh. In the yard so much, you know, I have less calluses. Yeah. It's like my hands. But you are got that to funny numb thumb. My numb thumb. <laughs> are there any uh, uh, tools that you've had that you think have been, have been a mistake? Yes. Well, you know, um, Gretchen, my daughter, is has really gotten into gardening. So I bought her a whole garden bag with, with a lot of tools in it, which I will not do that again. I will go pick them out separately. Mm-hmm. And she had this uh, garden gloves. And they had claws on the end, on the right hand only. Claws. Like Wolverine. Yeah. (laughs) Except they were not retractable. Okay. Yes. So that she could scrape the, scrape it and stuff. And I said, well, well, how how are they? And she goes, well, to be honest, not that great. Mm. Because she goes, how often do you really want to sift and scrape? And that's all you can do. You can't do anything else because they've got these long claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like that was... um, I feel that that was bought in haste. <laughs> <laughs> I've made mistakes before buying tools that are either brown or green. Oh, because they get totally lost. Yes. You need tools that are red or purple or lime green works too uh-huh. because the times, especially like Fisker tools, mm-hmm. I don't know where they go, but then I just, they get, they and get absorbed you, into the collective. And yeah, into the collective. They do. Lost things in compost piles before. Or, you know what I've been doing? You know, a lot of tools, hand tools and bigger ones have holes in them. I put bright red ribbon oh, through the hole. Oh, that's smart. Because otherwise I would have lost every little weed or thing I've ever had. I also don't like tools that just have one purpose once a year. I don't either. I won't buy stuff like that. So I think like like a like a those like a bulb borer. Have you seen those at all? Somebody gave me one. I didn't even know what it was. Yeah, but I've never. I'm never going to use it because I think it's silly. They don't work very well. They don't have. They just have one purpose. Yeah. And you use it once a year. And they look flimsy to me anyway. Yes. And yeah. so, but if, I think a tool you need to it needs to have many uses or at least have use it a couple times a couple times a year. I also have bought. Um, really cheap tools before, which is probably why you broke them, and they break. They break. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like to, if I had the choice to spend a little bit more, a little bit more money to get a higher quality tool, it just lasts longer. My same philosophy with like wooden spoons or spatulas in the kitchen. If you buy a cheap wooden spoon or a cheap rubber scraper, it's not going to last you very long. But I have some wooden spoons and rubber scrapers that I've had for over 20 years. I've, I have one from my mom. Oh, I love I that. I know. I mean, it's it's like it's like what's in your thumb at this point. It's like a big fat splinter that I'm stirring stuff <laughs> with. It's really old. <laughs> my, my husband gave me a really great set of good wood handled steel garden tools that will last me my whole life Um, oh that's the best i think that's really wonderful that is the best i you know there's some tools that i think are actually bad yes um and i think leaf blowers are pretty terrible well i know you mentioned that earlier today Mm -hmm. and can i just say one thing Mm -hmm. is that um i agree with you however as soon as i had just Taken the leaf blower and blown the leaves off my back patio. Okay, so that's <laughs> ironic, and now I feel millennial. <laughs> but I think, can I just say this? Uh-huh. Is that I don't, I don't use it to rake my lawn. Good. Is that you know it, maybe there's Good. a difference between like, like here's the di- there's a couple differences. First uh-huh. of all, what kind is it? Is it a battery? Is it electric? Or is it uh, gas powered? Electric. Good. That's the best one to get. Environment wise, mm-hmm. the gas powered ones are horrible, horrible pollutants and so, so, so loud. Um, if you have a leaf blower and you're doing your lawn, not only could you be blowing all little tiny insect eggs right. out of there and sterilizing your lawn, you're also, depending on how powerful it is, in your lawn is our allergens. Um, 
there there actually could be you know insects dead insects there could be little tiny feces from little tiny mm-hmm. animals and stuff and what you're doing when you're blowing those leaves you're blowing all that up and you're breathing it in oh so fast such it, a good point it's like licking the sidewalk yeah. and also they're just loud they're so loud the, the noise pollution on them is they actually have been banned in some states, some counties, I should say. Mm. So anyway, I'm 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 a huge anti fan of um, of leaf blowers. And if you don't, if you're not raking your lawn, l- raking is so good for your lawn. It's a great way to dethatch your lawn and mm-hmm. to get it activated. Mm-hmm. And you can take all of that thatch and all those leaves and then put them in your compost pile. Yeah. And if you're just blowing them away and not bagging them up, mm-hmm. where are you blowing them? Either in your neighbor's mm-hmm. yard. Or the right. wind comes and blows them right back. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. You know, but you see all these lawn companies doing it because they're in such a hurry. Yeah. You know, and they don't care. Like, if, if you don't hire them, but your neighbor does, they will blow it your way. They do not have patience. They don't have patience, Christy. Because they're, you know, working on a clock. So anyway, that's my thing about, that's a, to me, that's a very bad tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with you. As long as I can use it to blow leaves off my patio. You know, fortunately for you, I'm not a dictator (laughs) of Wheat Ridge. So (laughs) we're not an HOA. (laughs) So yes, you can do what you want. Hello. Welcome to another episode of How Does Your Garden Grow? There's really no wrong way to do it. Janelle, for example, uses the parental model of gardening. Good morning, garden. How are we doing this morning? Parsley, you look fabulous. You're so big. How's my little arugula doing? You're so brave. Nobody really likes you. They're just pretending, yet you keep growing. Oh, broccoli. You've gone completely to seed. What am I going to do with you? You're so bad. Why can't you be more like cabbage? Cabbage just sits there for weeks without complaining, without going to seed. Why don't we all just model ourselves after cabbage? Whatever works, Janelle. And here's Rowena, the nervous gardener. Uh Uh-oh. A bug. Are you a bad bug? There. That'll teach you to make my garden your home. Uh Uh-oh. What is wrong with this eggplant? What do you need? Staking? There you go. What else? Fertilizer? There. Nice, fresh horse poop. Water? Here. Oh no. Now it looks dead? Maybe it's me? I stunt everything I touch. This is destroying my self-esteem. I need therapy. Well, some ways of gardening may be less good than others. And yet, gardeners, keep on gardening. However you want to do it, grow something. It'll nourish your soul. What about, um, do you have any garden tool hacks? Garden tool hacks. Yes. Okay. This, this is going to seem so silly, but this is like my favorite thing. When I moved into my house, they were in the garage. Somebody had left all these plastic milk crates. Remember when everybody got milk from yeah. the, the, the milk truck? And they were also great when you were a young person in college or in your first apartment. That's your furniture. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was your furniture. Yeah. That and cinder blocks. Yeah. It was my dresser. It was my entertainment uh-huh. center. That's right. Me too. Well, now it's my garden stool. It's the absolute oh, perfect height. Oh, that's such a height. great idea. You don't have to kneel. Plus, I have one of those styrofoam knee pads uh-huh. that I never use for kneeling because I don't like kneeling, but I put it on top of my milk crate. Perfect. And it... uh. It's great because I don't have raised beds, so I can just sit on that, and I can sit and, and do any do almost anything. So that's that's my favorite hack. My new one I just made was a spreading container for Milky Spore. You brought that over to my house. That was genius. Where I took a an, a container of Japanese pinko crumbs and emptied it out and. Put in the powder, uh huh. Poked some holes in it, taped it to a broom, so that I could spread the milky spore because it's so powdery. That's perfect. Just kind of made it. One of the things I love about gardening is all the things we can make second and third mm-hmm. uses of, like yeah, 
all of the little um, jelly jars. All yeah. the stuff we would normally, th they're, they're all used for seeds. That, that's how I do the seeds. Uh, it just feels really good not to just keep throwing stuff away. Because as someone said to me once and really like changed my world, there is no away. It's still there. It's still there. You, there's no away. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Uh, my, mom, my, my mom used to take a butter knife and she used to use it to weed the cracks in the driveway when seeds or weeds would get oh, in there. Oh, yeah. I thought that was such a clever yeah, that idea. Is my clever. brother Monty was just telling me about that. One of his favorite memories of her mom was how she would get in there. And take the perfect. And weed the driveway with a butter knife. Uh -huh. And I think I've done that before, just using old forks or spoons mm -hmm. to do things in the garden. Old utensils, that can be a good use. Um, I've taken coffee filters yeah. and put them in the bottom of outdoor container pots. Oh, that's clever. Because then the soil won't stays in. Because stays in. it always comes flying out when you yeah. repot stuff. Mm -hmm. Christy, that's so cool. I have a whole packet of that that I did not know what to do with. I can do that. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. And I've done this too before where you put a little piece of clay at the bottom of a pot too, uh -huh. which is also good, but then you still can lose a lot of soil. So yeah, you, you can. just throw coffee. And oh. do you ever do this too, as long as we're on the topic of container pots? But, you know, you can use use a lot of soil in a big pot. Uh-huh. And if you fill half of it with uh, pop, uh, packing peanuts. Oh, the styrofoam? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's recycling that. It's giving it another purpose. It so it's not sitting in a landfill somewhere. You can lift it because it's it not as heavy. It makes the pot as heavy. heavy. Right. And you don't have to use as much soil. You know, I um, I also love and find a million uses for, like, um, buckets that, the size of that comes in kitty litter or big Costco size cat food. Mm -hmm. That stuff comes in handy for everything. You can collect rain. You can put weeds in it. That's those are great. That's a great tool that that's you a have. Great that's just tool. around your house. Yeah, yeah. Um, I saw an interesting hack for milk jugs, which is that you can make a watering can out of them by just poking holes in the top of the cap. Uh huh. So you can fill the milk jug up with water uh -huh. and put the cap on it, and you've made your own watering can. Oh, that's cool. The milk jug. <laughs> Better than what I did with them, which is bury them, and I'm still digging them up. Oh, right. <laughs> Remember? That goes all the way back to our first episode of our favorite gardening mistakes. Uh huh. huh? Now, listen, there is kind of one more thing I want to talk about about tools, which is when I went to buy a small um, pitchfork, garden fork. All the uh, cancer warnings. Yes. On the tools. From California. Yeah, from Prop 65 in California. Mm -hmm. um, I have gotten that too. I bought a water sprayer that had that, and it scared the crap out of me seeing that warning label on there. Yeah. I don't, uh, that's dis that's disturbing. That's the last thing you want to have on something that you are going to spend time with in the garden. Yeah. You know? So um, I really was disturbed by it. And so I, well, I made some calls. So the tools were made by, first of all, I'm in Lowe's. That's where I was. Mm -hmm. The sh tools were made by craftsmen. And I called over one of the nice people that work at Lowe's, and I said to her, what's this cancer warning about? And she goes, what cancer warning? And I showed her, and she goes, I don't know. Mm. She called a manager. The manager never came. They were, oh. you know, very busy. Yeah. So I said, don't worry about it. I went home, and I emailed craftsmen, and they answered right away. A couple of times, and I want to kind of read to you the correspondence that yeah. we had. Okay. So, I to them, you know, dear craftsmen, every gardening tool I saw at Lowe's had a cancer warning on it. What is that about? Why is it necessary to use flatulates or whatever, which are banned in other countries? Please help me with information. Thank you. <laughs> the next day, I get an email. Thank you for contacting us, Mrs. Weiss. Mrs. Yes. Weiss. Yes. Yeah. Automatic, oh, my I guess. goodness. In reference to your question, please contact Lowe's. They are the ones who may answer all your questions. I write them back. They don't know anything about it. It's a craftsman product. Can you not answer my question? Edith Weiss. They, they write me back. Thank you for contacting us. Regarding your question, craftsman is not informed of anything you are talking about. All our tools are made with global material which means that the USA does not process all the raw material to manufacture it. Therefore, it is necessary to bring it from other countries. 
If you see that in all the tools, then you should report it to the store supervisor who is in charge of giving an explanation. We here at Customer Service do not have that type of information. So I suggest you check with the manager. That doesn't make any sense to me. This, it's it's going to make less sense because today, today I called Craftsman. Wow. No, it was Lowe's. I called Lowe's because I said, oh, and I told them, I said, so why do you carry these things? Do you not have a choice to carry some? And I said, the point is not that people say, oh, they're crazy Californians. Anything is cancer causing. I said, the point is that any chemicals that you use on these tools are going to end up in our water mm -hmm. or our soil. So do you not have a choice? Or even your skin, right? It's like touching oh, yes, it, right? Yes, on your skin. It used to, these things, they used to put it in shampoo and soap and they took that away. And this is stuff that's banned in many, many nations. So the guy says, well, hold, please hold. So I said, sure. So he came back and he said, um, you should go, you should call craftsmen. Right. <laughs> I said, yes. I said, but they told me to call you Lowe's. And he goes, well, you know, it's just Prop 65. It's just California. And I'm like, N that's not but the who point. who put the sticker on? Yeah, who put the stick? He goes, are you in California? I said, no, I'm in Colorado. My question is, why are you yeah. selling these as opposed to something without? And we went round and round. Remember when you used to try to call a company on, and the menu, you couldn't get through on the yes. phone menu? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a human phone menu that I went through for the past three days. It sounds like my experience talking with unemployment. It does, doesn't it? You can't, you How can't get... How frustrating. How frustrating. It was like talking, you know, you, you watch press conferences with politicians. Mm -hmm. They never answer the question. Mm -hmm. They use it as a talking point. That's all it they is. They won't, yes. I got, so, I got so frustrated. But, you know, there's bigger stuff going on, so I tamped myself down. But still. But it is a really good question. If anybody else out there can help us. Yeah. I would really be interested to get more information don't, about. Don't we have to start making little choices like that? Mm -hmm. And but, haven't we done it already in our lives and, it, and, it, and things are okay? When I grew up, we never recycled. Right. Uh, we didn't wear seatbelts. Mm-hmm. That's right. There are things that we're changing that are mm -hmm. ever so much better. And other things that I'm afraid are really, really going to get us in 10, 15, 20 years badly or longer. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's my little... Edith, thanks for doing... Good job. Let me thanks climb off my soapbox. Sorry. No, I, I appreciate you doing all that work and digging into it. Mm -hmm. Good job, Edith. Thank you. I always wanted to be a detective. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. <laughs> Edith, are you done chewing pumpkin seeds? It's your fault. They're delicious, and you gave them to me, and you made them. <laughs> They're delicious. Yes, I I'm just want to make sure you're ready. I'm ready. Because it's time for... Uh-oh. Mailbag. Ring, ring. Okay. Very good. Listen, I have, you know, I have a little letter here. Such a nice letter from Pamela from Denver. She says, this is my first gardening summer, and I'm wondering if feeling a little blue to have it end is normal. Kind of like post-show blues when a show closes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've gotten happily used to the beautiful morning routine in nature. Yeah. Isn't it so normal? Oh, yes. It's normal to feel a little sad. A little sad. But can I also add this on? Uh-huh. I'm also strangely relieved. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? For somebody, we say we love gardening so much, and we have a whole podcast about gardening. But we kind of get a lot of our life back now. Yeah. Because the garden has dictated our time, mm -hmm. you know? But yeah, a little relieved, but also definitely I'm a little blue about it. For sure I am. Do you have a letter? I do. This is from Paula from Florence, Colorado. Okay. She says, hi, Christy and Edith, long-time listener, first-time writer. Oh, I love that. Uh-huh. And side note, Paula has a pumpkin story. Because remember, we were asking for pumpkin stories. So Paula yes. came a little bit after Halloween, but it was so good, I have to share it. Oh, good. And there's always going to be Halloween next year. That's true. So, mm -hmm. so here's her pumpkin story. This pumpkin story isn't actually mine. It's my sister's. Last year, she and her husband picked a white pumpkin at Porter Farm and Nursery in Raleigh, North Carolina. It has been a year 
and the pumpkin is still looking great. A year? A year? Ready for a second Halloween. I've attached photos of my brother-in-law with the pumpkin the day they picked it on their porch a few weeks ago. Thanks for keeping me company in the garden and for all the great tips and laughs, Paula. And then look at that pumpkin still alive. Oh, wow. Isn't that impressive? Yes. And, and you know how we can tell she's not a liar? Because she gave credit to her sister. She could have just not told us. She could have Excellent told us. Point. And you know, I carved seven pumpkins wow. this year, and five of them are all flat as a pancake. Oh. Within not even a week later. Wow. And then one of them got eaten by a squirrel. Of course it did. Well, you know, the squirrels <laughs> have to eat too, right? <laughs> right. Hey, folks, thanks for those letters. We really appreciate it. And if you have a favorite gardening story, a success, a flop, uh huh, uh, you can write to us. If oh, you, you wanna... just want to say hi. Maybe just you just want to go, hi, guys, in the basement. If... Are you lonely? Maybe we're lonely. If you have a favorite gardening tool you want to tell us about, Yes, and we ask about the keyhole. Oh, if you keyhole garden. For yeah, sure, we want to know about that. from you for sure. Um, have you ever gotten a really bad splinter someplace and then you had to go to urgent care to get it taken out? I like how you say someplace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are some privacy issues here. You know. That's true. Good point. Well, anywho, you can write to us at UpsideDownTulips at Gmail or at our website at UpsideDownTulips.com. Ta-da. And now it's time for your garden inspiration of the week. Our inspiration this week is actually two sides of the same coin. The first side is this. Autumn is the hardest season. The leaves are all falling, and they're falling like they're falling in love with the ground. <laughs> That's beautiful. What a beautiful image. Andrea Gibson, she is a poet. Now, the other side of that coin says, Autumn shows us how beautiful it is to let things go. Yes. Two totally different ways of looking at it, and they're both just great. I love that. Yeah, that's a first. A dual a little. I'm so inspired now, are you? I feel very inspired. We hope you folks are too, and thanks so much for listening. We are Edith Weiss and Christy Montour Larson. If you enjoy Upside Down Tulips, please give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Tunes or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Special thanks to Denise Gentilini for composing and performing the Upside Down Tulips theme song. If you would like to hear more of her music, go to denisegentilini.com or you can find that link on our website. And don't forget, if you make a mistake, your garden will forgive you. No blame. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Upside down.